In this lesson, we'll cover effective troubleshooting steps to resolve HDMI issues that may come up with one of your installations. Usually things go very smoothly when installing an Envy, but should you ever run into any issues, it's important to be well prepared. I'll walk you through our HDMI troubleshooting guide from MavVRMB.com, which has been curated over the years to solve almost any scenario you're likely to encounter. Let's dive in. Let's begin with prerequisites for reliable HDMI. First, please only use HDMI 18 gigabit per second or 48 gigabit per second premium certified cables. Use only HDMI cables at least six feet in length. Please do not use any active fiber cables for source devices, such as Apple TVs, Blu-ray players, Kaleidoscape, and so forth. Oftentimes these devices may not provide enough power for the cable. Please use only active fiber HDMI cables for any runs over 25 feet, which come pre-terminated, and try to avoid the use of balance if possible. Make sure that any directional cable is installed in the right direction. If you're talking about an HDMI cable between the AVR and the NV, the AVR would be the source side and the NV will be the display side. If you're talking about an HDMI cable between the NV and the display, the NV is then the source side and the display, of course, is the display side. If using an active fiber cable, make sure that you're following the vendor's recommended power requirements. For example, in some cases, the vendor may recommend adding power to just one end of the cable or possibly both. Make sure that all cables are plugged in tightly and firmly seated. Make sure that the HDMI cables are plugged into the right NV ports. The AVR or HDMI switch should be plugged into the NV port labeled input and the display or projector should be plugged into the port labeled output on your NV. Please update your display to its latest firmware. If you're using the JVC NZ7, NZ8, or NZ9, Please be sure to update to JVC's firmware 3.0 or later. If you receive a warning from the Envy that the display does not support HDCP 2.2 and you're sure it does, then the problem is most likely due to the cable, particularly if it's an active fiber cable. We'll talk about that a little bit later. For best results, please make sure to use Envy firmware 1.8 or later. We covered in previous lessons how to update the Envy firmware. Let's talk about HDMI troubleshooting. Before doing any troubleshooting, try or consider the following. First, be sure to update your MV to the latest experimental firmware and see if that solves any issue you may be having. If you're using dual applets from your AVR with one going to the MV and one going to another display, try removing the one going to the other display so that only the MV is connected to the AVR and see if that solves the issue. If the issue only occurs when using the Kaleidoscape with some or all content and your Envy was built before September 2021, you may need a special update on your Envy that can only be performed by MadVR Labs. Contact us for more help with this matter. If the installation had been working fine before, please consider what, if anything, changed since the issue started. For example, knowing the issue started after installing new cables or a new source device can provide a big clue. You can also try restoring from older MV settings. Also, it's a good idea to try temporarily bypassing other devices in the chain if necessary, just as a test. Make sure that all HDMI cables are plugged into the right slots. Determine if the problem is on the input or the output side of the MV. This will then drive the rest of our troubleshooting accordingly. Bring up the MV menu using remote control and keep this menu on the screen. Then, Wait for the issue to happen again or reproduce it if you know how. When this issue happens, see if the MV menu displays on the screen or if it disappears. If the menu remains on the screen, then we know that the issue is on the input side of the MV. If the MV menu disappears during the HDMI issue, then we know that the issue is on the output side. And you'll see in just a moment how that's going to direct where we go next. Now let's talk about troubleshooting ACMI problems on the input side. If you determine that the issue is on the input side, we're gonna follow these steps. First, 
Make sure you meet and follow the prerequisites for reliable HUI handshaking listed at the start of this guide. If not, your issue could very well be caused by not meeting one of these requirements, even if it may seem unlikely. Connect the source device directly to the MB input port. Does everything work reliably then? If so, it suggests the issue may be with your AVR or HDMI switch, or with one of the cables that is now bypassed. Likewise, if you have any devices or extenders in between your AVR or HDMI switcher and the MB, such as an HDMI doctor, please try removing such devices and retest. Switch the cable back to the AVR or HDMI switch and continue with the steps below, which may help you further isolate the problem. If the problem persists when running the cable from the source device directly into the MV, please triple check your cable and then follow the steps listed at the end of this guide to collect troubleshooting logs for MADVR support. Please make sure you're using an AVR output that's configured to pass HDMI 2.0 18 gigabits per second or higher. Some AVRs, like Denon or Marantz, must be specifically set in their menus to HDMI enhanced mode. Some high-end AVRs and AVPs may have one port that outputs at that bandwidth and a second port that does not. So please ensure you're using the correct HDMI output from the AVR or AVP if they differentiate between the two. Make sure that none of your HDMI devices, your HDMI distribution system, or switches is performing any video processing and that any EDID management functions are disabled. Devices that perform EDID functions can commonly cause issues like HDMI intermittent dropouts, failure for Envy to receive an HDR signal when it's expected, or can cause the Envy to receive the wrong frame rate or resolution as its incoming signal. As a test, try removing such devices temporarily. By default, the MV EDID tells devices downstream that it supports the full 18 gigabit per second bandwidth. Your cable may not have the required bandwidth to actually support this. This is likely different than what your AVR or other downstream components see when the MV is not in the chain and can explain situations where there is an HMI issue when the MV is in the chain. For example, you might find that the system works perfectly fine without the MV in the chain, but you have the HMI issue as soon as you put the MV in. This may lead to the false assumption that the problem must be with the MV, when actually there are many reasons why a cable can fail with the MV in the chain. For example, by default, the MV outputs RGB 12-bit output, which is a higher bandwidth than RGB 8-bit or YCBCR422 12-bit, that your system will likely use when the MV is not in the chain. Another example is that a cable may work fine at 4K without an MV, but in the chain with an MV fail with the MV outputting 5K. If your cable cannot support the full 18 gigabit per second bandwidth, this can lead to intermittent or total dropouts. As a test, go to the MV HDMI configuration menu and change the EDID input override to 9 gigabits per second then restart the MV. Is the problem solved now? If so, it points to an issue with your cable, even if it's an 18 gigabit per second certified cable. After finishing with this test, return to setting to the auto or pass-through. Try replacing your interconnect cables with brand new HDMI cables to see if that helps. You can start with the cable between one source device and the AVR and the AVR and the MV. If that resolves the issue, replace the other cables as well. If the MV displays no signal, try sending an HDMI hot plug command using the Embry remote control. See the remote control configuration menu to determine what colored button is mapped to this function. Does the image come back after this? This is not a solution, but important information to pass along to Mavior Labs, and in some cases can be a convenient way to easily restore an HDMI signal. If after all these steps the problem persists, and especially if the issue is happening only when using a particular source device, try placing an AC Fury Vertex 2, Vroom, Acania, or the like between the source device and the AVR, or between the AVR and the MV. Or you might be able to accomplish the same thing using any smart 2x1 or 4x1 switch that performs an HDMI sync when in use. 
make sure the HDMI device has all EDIN management and scaling features turned off. If none of these steps have helped you resolve the issue, please capture HDMI troubleshooting logs by carefully following the instructions at the end of this guide. Now let's move on to troubleshooting HDMI problems on the output side. The fastest way to test and resolve an issue on the output side is to temporarily replace the cable with a brand new HDMI cable certified as specified in our section 2.0 above. We understand this can be troublesome, especially when it's difficult to run a new cable between the rack and the display. In that case, we recommend obtaining a new cable that's long enough for you to safely drape across the floor so you can test a new cable without the time and trouble to actually install the cable. If the new cable works, then although it may be a big challenge to replace it permanently, you at least have your answer and can plan accordingly. If it's not possible to replace the cable, then try temporarily relocating the MV close enough to display to test with a passive HDMI cable no longer than about 4 meters. We recognize that relocating the MV is usually not a viable permanent option. However, the purpose of this test is solely to determine whether the cable is the issue. If it's determined that the cable is at fault and it's not possible to replace the cable, you can try inserting an active HDMI switch, such as one from AC Fury, AV Pro Edge, or Pixel Gen, in front of the display. The switch may clean up the signal and permanently solve the issue, as we have seen work in several cases. If it's not possible to permanently replace the cable or add a switch, you may be able to get a reliable signal by using 9 gigabits per second output bandwidth from the Envy with little loss in picture quality. Not an ideal solution, but in a pinch, this may solve what you need. To do this in the MV HDMI configuration, change the EDID output override, not to be confused with the input override, to 9 gigabits per second. The instructions here explain how to do that. If none of the above helps, check to see if the display could be the culprit. To do this, connect the MV HDMI output to a 1080p or 4K TV. If none's available, a PC monitor that supports HCCP 2.2 will do. If the problem persists, try different HDMI cables between the MV and the TV. Although this will not solve the issue at hand with your primary display and may provide the insight needed to further troubleshoot the issue. As a best practice, please try changing only one thing at a time when you perform your tasks. If none of these steps help, please contact MadVR support. The rest of this guide just goes on to explain how to gather the information needed for a Mavior Lab support specialist to be able to help you quickly resolve the issue. And this last part talks about how to capture HDMI logs when the issue is found to be on the input side. Okay, now that we covered how to do efficient HDMI troubleshooting, it's time to move on to our next lesson.